Looking for the best liquid cooler on the market? Stay tuned. The PrinterBot Simple Metals full metal construction combined with a GT2 belt pulley system produces a 3D print that rivals that of most 3D printers costing thousands more. The 1.75mm Ubi's Hodden can print down to 100 micron resolution and calibrating the Simple Metals build plate using the auto leveling probe couldn't be easier. Learn more about my favorite 3D printer and the winner of Make's 2015 Thin Wallet Award by visiting PrinterBot.com. Okay guys, all in one liquid coolers. The Swift Tech 220-X, H220-X, it's customizable. It has a colored water block and a colored reservoir. Uh, it comes with some awesome anti-kink tubing, just like what you'd buy if you built your own loop. And you can add on to this loop. So the, the pump is strong enough that you can add, say, a graphics card or another radiator. And it, it lets you, if you're uncertain whether you want a full custom loop, it lets you, you know, buy something now to get the benefits of water cooling, get your feet wet, haha, and see if you like it or not. See if you really feel like, you know, draining and adding on to a loop with very low risk because this is, in my opinion, one of the best water coolers on the market. Okay, so let's get her open and see what we have inside real quick. We have some foam. Oh, and the cooler. The cooler's down here too. We have the screws for the fans. We have a fan splitter that can accommodate seven fans. The red there is for the input. We have the thermal compound, which is meh. You know, it's okay, but it's not the greatest. We have the AMD mounting hardware. We have your red, white, and green. The blue is already on the Apogee block. And, of course, these are interchangeable. We have the Socket 2011 kit. We have the manual, which has enough information, but it would be nice to see a little bit more detail. We have the back plate for the 1155-1156 with the full copper water block. The nice black tubing with a clamp fitting over the 45 degree angle screw in fitting. The 1155 brackets with the little uh, nuts with the springs. I like that kind of stuff. We have the SATA power along with a four pin header for the pump there's the window and of course i think i mentioned earlier that this was colored it is not colored it is only white so the fluid would color it here's your fill valve and that's about it okay so one thing i did want to talk about are these adapters so these are the 2011 and i had to take off the ones for the 1155, 1156, and there's a little tiny place where a little tension piece of plastic goes. So a little tiny thing. And I will say, getting this back on, I feel like I'm going to break a hand because they go that way, and then <laughs> you have to really like, <clears throat> Ow. Like I said. So that's how you get them back in. It would have really been nice uh, to see Swift Tech come up with a little bit better mechanism to uh, do that, to change these out. However, once you get them in, they feel extremely solid, like they're not going anywhere. They have nice little springs, and they should be a breeze to get on there. So let's go ahead and take a look at it installed, and we'll see what we think. Okay, quickly, I just wanted to show you, well, other than the fact that if you look at my finger, I've got like indentations from putting these on. I know it might have looked easy on camera, but that was a complete pain in the ass, and it really hurts to push them in. But I wanted to show you uh, what I've been up to. So I had to take off the fans to put it in the little uh, cage that goes on the um, Case Labs case, and... The other unfortunate thing I found is all the fans are screwed in with just like regular little nuts instead of the longer fan screws. Now it does come with longer fan screws, that was nice, but getting a screwdriver that was small enough to fit through the fan holes to unscrew it, I basically wound up using this guy because it was the only thing I could find that was small enough 
because the holes are tiny. And then I had to use a pair of pliers so that I could even twist the screwdriver. So it'd be nice, Swift Tech, if you had just installed longer screws to start with, uh, especially if you already include them. So in conclusion, what do I think about the H220X? Honestly, guys, it's a great cooler. It runs, in my testing, about two and a half degrees cooler Celsius than my H100, which actually just died today um, as I was finishing up my benchmarking. So luckily I got that all done. You know, it's about, in my basement, it's a little cool down here. So I was running under full load on a uh, 5820K, about 58 degrees Celsius under full load. Um, but again, the ambient temperature in the basement here is usually about 68. So take it with a grain of salt, depending on where you are in your room temperatures. But the H100 was running at right around 60. So two, two and a half degree difference between at least the water coolers that I have um, and the air coolers that I have. It's a little, you know, two to three degrees cooler than those as well. The benefit you get is that it is flexible. So if you want someday to add a GPU water block, you can. Or if you need longer, I mean, one of the downsides to it is it has really short you know, default tube hosing on it, where the H220 had really long tubing, probably too long of tubing. The H220X probably has a little bit too short of tubing. Uh, as you can see in the system that I built, it, it's okay, it, it just barely reaches where my motherboard is in the front, but if you were using a bigger case, like something, you know, like a Fractal case or a Corsair case, I don't think it would fit. Now, that aside, if you're not scared of draining the loop and refilling it, you can always replace the tubing. So you can make it whatever size you want it to be. Now, that gets to my major down point with this. At least the version I have here, has an extremely noisy pump. So I have a D5 Vario in my um, in my big rig, the one you guys have seen many times before. And you know, if it's at three, it's it's pretty loud. You get a, a little bit of that warble from uh, the impeller. It it doesn't have an adjustable speed uh, knob on it, so that you can turn the pump up or down depending on what you want. Now. It is controlled by the motherboard and you can control that if you have motherboard software, but personally, I would rather just control it on the device itself and let the motherboard control the fans. That's my big weakness. I'm also not su a big super fan um, of the fans that come with it. They're more than adequate, but they are not the most quiet um, compared to my Corsair fans. So I would like to see, you know, maybe for the price tag, uh, I really can't complain because you're paying, you know, as of filming this, it was, you know, around $150. You're paying, you're getting much more for that than that $150. There's actually about $250 worth of parts in this kit. So, you know, you might replace the fans or it might not bug you. It might be a lot quieter than what you've currently had. So guys, in conclusion, would I recommend this? Absolutely, I'd recommend it. It is, in my opinion, the best all-in-one on the market in the 240 millimeter space. It's definitely got legs to go to more rads, to more blocks. Uh, the, the Apogee water block it comes with is really nice. I actually really like that block. And it's just, you know, it's just, it feels like quality. It, you know, you're paying maybe $40 more than some of the competition but you're really getting the value back in return. This is Tim for Timmy Tech TV, guys. Make sure you check me out on social media, at Timmy Tech TV on Twitter, at Timmy Tech TV on Instagram, or you can check us out over on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Timmy Tech TV. As always, you can support us by using our Amazon link, amazon.timmytechtv.com. That just helps me buy the stuff like RAM that I can't get to review. So always appreciated. And until next time, We'll see you.